We've talked a lot on this channel about the design process, but today I want to focus more on the product development process and a term that I've used quite a bit in my videos that you have definitely noticed is the checkpoint process. And this is a product process that we use at Uber Eats from start to finish of a project. There are five checkpoints and I'm going to break it down for you in this video. If you're already feeling a little bit overwhelmed, don't worry, I've created a guide for you that kind of outlines the checkpoint process to help you kind of kickstart implementing this with your team, you can grab it in the link below. Before we dive deep into the checkpoint process, I want to start by giving you a bit of context about what the checkpoint process is and how it's used. The goal of the checkpoint process is to ensure alignment amongst cross-functional stakeholders and teams throughout a project. For the duration of that project, we have a checkpoint deck, which is like a slide presentation, and it has all of the checkpoints in it. Over the course of a project, we're adding our work to this deck and updating and iterating it to ensure that our cross-functional partners and stakeholders can come and jump into the checkpoint at any time and use it as a source of truth to see where we're at in the product process. Depending on the size or the length of the project, the checkpoint process, in my experience, can take anywhere from four weeks to six months if it's a really big project. There's no standard length of time between each of the checkpoints. It's kind of up to you and your team to deliver the next checkpoint when you're ready. Most of the time, each checkpoint is an actual meeting where we'll invite everybody to give us some feedback and sort of have a healthy discussion. But if it's a really light project, we might skip the meeting and kind of just email out an update on where we're at and the current checkpoint instead. As for who to invite to these checkpoints and share the workout with, think about the racy model. And if that's an unusual concept for you or you're not quite sure what I'm talking about when I talk about racy, then check out this video that I did all about working with stakeholders and how to use the racy model to collaborate effectively. Okay, let's dive in to the five checkpoints. The first one is product definition. The second is concept review. The third is product solution review. The fourth is pre-experiment review. And the last one is full launch and retro. Let's break down each checkpoint now. So checkpoint one is about problem definition. Now this is usually led by the product manager or product owner on your team. And before you have this checkpoint, ideally your product manager has put together a PRD or product requirements doc. RFC is also another common sort of documentation tool used there, request for comment. Some sort of documentation that outlines the problem, the goal you're trying to solve and how you'll measure success. This should be done in advance of checkpoint one. So during checkpoint one, it's really up to the product manager to go through the problem, the goals, and share this out with the wider cross-functional team. Usually during this checkpoint, we'll have some discussions around the scope, maybe the sequencing, and maybe prioritization of the different product requirements. We may even talk about some different solutions that we have in mind, some different ideas that we've been thinking about. There's no designs yet or often no chosen solution, but there might be a recommended solution or way forward from the team that they wanna kind of propose and share out to the rest of the group for feedback. Checkpoint two is concept review. And now this checkpoint is led by the designer. During this checkpoint, the designer will share out any concepts, different directions, different iterations. You may not have a final proposed solution or direction, but you may show a few different ideas or concepts to the group for discussion. The goal of this checkpoint is to kind of walk away with a clear direction or solution that we're all aligned on. Because of that, when you're presenting your different ideas back to the group, it's important to have some conviction in the work that you're sharing and communicate any clear key rationale for the different directions that you've been exploring. I usually like to make sure that even though I'm showing a few different options, I have a strong recommendation and that's usually the concept that I'll focus on the most. The level of fidelity here is sort of up to you and your team and what's sort of acceptable at this step. I've shown some sort of low level mocks. I wouldn't show wireframes because sometimes that can be a little bit distracting to the audience and they might get a bit tripped up on these gray boxes that you could be showing. So I find some sort of like mid-level fidelity is pretty good to communicate the key idea or concept across. If you've done any user research, then checkpoint two is the place to share that research 
research back to the group. So invite your user researcher if you have one and use the time in this checkpoint to inform the rest of the group of the research that's been done. Make sure you also tie that research insights into the concepts that you share as well and how that's informed some of your design decisions. So you should be walking away from checkpoint two with some clarity and confidence on the key chosen direction that you and the team want to move forward with. And that takes us to checkpoint three, the product solution review. This checkpoint is also led by the designer and you can think of this as almost a final design review. You should come to this checkpoint ready to share back to the group the final designs and final chosen concept that you're gonna move forward with. Your UX functionality should be pretty locked down at this point, but you may get some feedback during this checkpoint around the UI and the visual design that you might wanna add some small tweaks into it later on. Content should be in a pretty good spot by now, so all that should really be left is any fine tuning tweaks or like really open gaps that really need to be solved, but ideally you've done the work to close those gaps in advance. Usually in checkpoint three, I like to walk through the final designs in the context of user stories and making sure that I'm walking through the actual flows, how users will move forward through the designs, through the experience, and make sure you're showing not just the happy path, but also any error states or other kind of different flows that need to be considered as well. When it comes to sharing your work in Checkpoint 3, you want to be sharing the high fidelity final designs. And while you could share this statically by showing screens and sort of flat mocks within the presentation, I find that there is so much power in showing an interactive prototype back to the group at this phase of the project because it shows everyone how the product is actually going to work look and feel. And with the way the design industry is going, learning how to prototype is a no brainer. Instead of putting those flat files in the checkpoint presentation, imagine being able to show them how it looks, works and feels like as if it were the final real thing. I'm super grateful for the sponsor of today's video, which is Framer, a no code free to use tool, making it super easy for anyone to become a prototyper. You can create smart components complete with multiple states without using any code. You can also drop in pre-built components with their insert menu and make your own delightful custom animations 100% visually. In just a couple of hours, you could have a new skill that can help you stand up from the crowd and better communicate your work. Sign up for Framer for free at framer.com slash femcare. That link is also in the description. So the work is officially now handed off to engineering, which brings us to checkpoint Four. This is the pre-experiment review or another word that you could use for this checkpoint I think is sort of like the demo and go to launch plan. The engineering team will usually kick off this checkpoint by showing a demo of the working product. So between checkpoint three and checkpoint four has basically been the development part of the process and between those checkpoints, you've been QAing the work, giving the engineers feedback, and they've been working on implementing the designs. So checkpoint four is kind of kicked off with, here's the final demo, here's what engineering have built, and here's the product that we have ready to ship. The reason we call this pre-experiment review is often in our context, we are launching things as small experiments or A-B tests. So usually our data scientists might come into this checkpoint and share a little bit about the A-B test that we're gonna set up or the experiment that we're gonna run and share also a little bit about some of the guardrails, how we're gonna measure success and how we're gonna sort of make decisions on whether to pull it back or sort of roll it out further. If you have a product marketing manager or someone who's responsible for releasing products, the go-to-market kind of launch and plans, this checkpoint is also a great place for them to come in and share a little bit about the rollout plan. All right, then after checkpoint four, your product goes live. Whether it's just as a small experiment or maybe you're rolling it out to your entire user base, after checkpoint four, it's pretty much the green light to start rolling out, which then brings us to checkpoint five. This is the final checkpoint in the checkpoint process and it's sort of a retrospective opportunity and looking at the launch rollout. So we might do a bit of a review and a bit of a share out to our cross-functional partners about how our experiment is going, any early results or early signals we're getting or just generally how the product is performing in the market. 
We may also use this time to share back to the group results from a team retrospective that we may have done prior to sort of share out any learnings or you know, lessons that we've learned along the way during the project. And if the product is still in kind of the experimentation phase, we may talk a little bit about next steps for more of a global rollout if necessary. And that is the checkpoint process. Hopefully this has been a helpful video for you to finally hear more about how we use the checkpoint process, how it keeps everyone aligned, how we make sure we're sharing out work at really important milestones throughout the product design process to get alignment from everybody. It's a really, really helpful tool and I honestly don't know what I would do without the checkpoint process and how I would get the alignment and the feedback and the discussions that I need to make the right decisions. Catch you in another video. Bye-bye.